fasting induced hypoglycemia is different than like traditional hypoglycemia that you might see in like a normal clinical situation. Okay, fasting induced hypoglycemia is a pretty normal thing because in essence, your body gets a little bit more efficient at using the glucose. Now there's two things I wanna to touch on. One is the psychological piece and this can be covered in less than two minutes. So I'm gonna explain it really quick. There was a study that was published in the European Journal of Clinical Nutrition that took a look at two different kinds of people. People that claimed to be more sensitive to missing meals. For example, whenever they missed a meal, they felt like they would get shaky or they felt like they would get low blood sugar. Or they felt like they would get kind of weak and faint. Well, then they took another group that felt like they could skip meals without any issue. They didn't think anything of it. They said, okay, both of you groups, you're gonna fast for 24 hours whether you like it or not. And they did this, and at the end of the 24 hours, the sensitive group said, oh my gosh, that was terrible, I was so shaky, I felt like I was gonna pass out, it was, it was terrible, I felt faint. The other group said, eh, it felt totally fine. Well, then they looked at their blood work and all their different <laughs> biomarkers, no difference, no difference. So there wasn't a whole lot biochemically or biologically going on, a lot of it was subjective. Now, I don't wanna discount someone's subjective feelings and how they feel about something, but from what we can see with the data, it was largely psychological. So my point in saying this is, a lot of times, this hypoglycemia feeling that you get is because you're nervous about fasting. So understand that and just implement shorter fasts until you get adjusted to it. But now, you're here for biochemistry, so let's have some fun with this. I do wanna make sure you hit that red subscribe button and then please hit that little bell icon to turn on notifications so you never ever miss a daily beat on this video and come by this channel daily and help boost the algorithm for us. It just helps the channel out. Uh, and then also, there's a link down below to check out Zero Fasting, which is a cool fasting app. So especially if you're new to fasting, this will help you out tremendously because there's a lot of community with it. So you can do group fasts, you can fast along with me personally because I'm part of the app and you can just time your fast and just get motivated that way. There is a free version. There's also a special discount for the Zero Plus version. I'll put a link to both down below. That way you can either try the free one or you can try the premium one, which has some additional content from me. So highly recommend Zero Fasting in the description. Also, before I forget, we have a really cool January challenge going on with the Zero Fasting app. So go ahead and check out the link down below. So during the month of January, we have a bunch of different challenges, a bunch of really cool giveaways, like giving away a Peloton, giving away a Tonal. So super cool stuff. So make sure you check out the specific January challenge with Zero Fasting down below in the description. There's a special link that you can utilize to take part in the challenge. And in a couple of weeks, I'll be hosting a specific challenge for one whole week within the Zero Fasting app. So check it out. So let's understand why going hypoglycemic or a little bit lower blood sugar isn't always a bad thing with fasting. You see, what ends up happening is different tissues in your body use different fuels. For example, your muscles have the ability to use glucose, but they also have the ability to use free fatty acids. That's pretty cool. Okay, then we have things like your brain. Brain nerve cells cannot use free fatty acids. They solely rely on glucose or in some cases, fatty acids that turn into ketones, but they don't run on fatty acids because they can't fit through what's called the blood-brain barrier. Then you have things like red blood cells, which strictly need glucose, or your retina, which strictly needs glucose, no exceptions. Now, this is what makes hypoglycemia scary because there's some functions in your body that if you don't have glucose, you're done, that's not gonna work, okay? But with fasting, we're kind of shifting what tissues use what fuel. It mainly has to do with something called AMPK. And to touch on AMPK really quick, all it is is when your body is low on energy coming in from food, there's a signal called AMPK. And what this signal does is it tells the body, hey, there's no food coming in, so let's pull energy from other substrates, i.e. Uh, glycogen to glucose, okay, carbohydrates stored in your muscles into the bloodstream, or fat. Okay, now additionally what it will do is it upregulates enzymes and transporters that allow you to use fat as a fuel source. Now this is great for lots of reasons, body composition, brain, everything. But as far as hypoglycemia is concerned, it's decreasing the demand for glucose because the tissues that can run on fats now have the ability to because the transporters are there. So it was like AMPK picked up the phone and said, hey, there's no food coming in, we're good to go, get all those shuttle buses ready, get the troops ready to start mobilizing the fat so that we don't need as much glucose. So your demand for glucose kind of goes down because you now can use fats. 
that alone will drive your blood sugar down. But what else is happening? Well, AMPK does something cool. It fuses the glucose transporter, okay, GLUT4. It fuses this transporter that normally carries glucose into a cell. It fuses it to the plasma membrane outside of a cell. What that means is ordinarily in a non-fasted state, if you have glucose flowing through the bloodstream, it kind of has to knock on the door of a cell and be like, hey, yo, let me in, man. I'm hungry. I'm, or I want to feed you. I want to come in and give you food. It's DoorDash. Well, that doesn't happen as much with fasting because the door's already open a little bit. Basically, the transporter, who would let the glucose in, is already standing at the door, the door wide open. So instead of DoorDash knocking on your door saying, I'm here with your food, you're already waiting on the porch and you eat it right there, right? So it makes it so it's a lot easier to get your glucose because the transporter's already there. What this means is glucose that is in the bloodstream gets taken up by the cells and is used more efficiently. Well, guess what? Cells using glucose more efficiently means your blood glucose could drop because it's not in the bloodstream, it's actually getting utilized properly. Then there's other situations where blood glucose can go up, but that's a whole different scenario, different day. Let's talk about that in another video. If you don't want to just take some dude on the internet's word for it, you can look at the pharmaceutical called metformin. The idea behind metformin for a type 2 patient is to drive up AMPK to drive up insulin sensitivity so that they can absorb more glucose to bring their blood sugar down. So metformin works along the AMPK pathway just like fasting is working along the AMPK pathway. We're trying to accomplish essentially the same thing. There's even some argument of extreme biohackers utilizing metformin for longevity and to improve a fast. But again, biohacking story for another day. So in essence, we've become hyper insulin sensitive during a fast because the cells are just ready to take up glucose as soon as possible. Well, remember, we want to be insulin sensitive during a fast because we don't want to produce a lot of insulin because what does insulin do? Insulin blunts what is called ketogenesis. We can't produce the ketones that are giving us a benefit during a fast if we have insulin constantly being pumped. Okay, now insulin is always at work a little bit, okay? So if you are insulin sensitive, you don't need as much to get the job done, which means you are not disrupting the formation of ketones. I want you to think of it like a hybrid car, okay? A hybrid car works on electricity and gasoline. And I'm gonna use a loose example, okay? I don't drive a Prius. So I don't really know precisely how they work, okay? If you are running in the hybrid zone, if you're running in the electric zone, you're probably gonna run on electricity up to about like 25 miles per hour. Then after 25 miles per hour, you might shift to fat, or in this case, gasoline, right? Because we're talking about cars. So that's kind of how our body is operating. Well, what fasting is doing with hypoglycemia is it's kind of shifting that. So instead of your Prius going, uh, shifting to gas at 25 miles per hour, it might run on electricity until 60 miles an hour and then shift to gas. So that, in essence, is what's happening. During a fast, you're running on more fuel efficiency, electricity. You're much more efficient, although you can only go 240 miles. But if you're going into a deeper fast, then you can have more efficiency, and then if you start to push it or your body demands it, then you start bringing in the carbohydrates, or in this case, you're bringing in gasoline, right? So it's all a different balance of what you need in a different scenario. But blood glucose generally will go a bit down later into a fast, and it's normal. There's one other thing to touch on that's very important, and that is gluconeogenesis, your body's ability to create glucose from other substrates. Interesting, complex thing here that you true biochem nerds will, will geek out on, but AMPK actually blocks keto or blocks uh, gluconeogenesis, but it does this through a weird process and it somehow kind of unlocks it so that gluconeogenesis can still occur because at the end of the day, creating new glucose from other substrates is still anabolic, which technically AMPK would block. So anyhow, point is, long story short, your liver creates new glucose during a fast to some degree. And that means that you are always going to have a new supply of glucose, even if you feel like you don't. Now, if you are someone that has a medical condition, such as you know, type one diabetes or anything like that, and you're having to manually manipulate things, it's a different story. I'm talking about for a seemingly healthy individual, it is not uncommon to see your blood glucose drop and a lot more of it is going to be that subjective psychosomatic effect. So as always, I invite you to please keep it locked in here on my channel and I'll see you tomorrow.